All right, uh, today I'm going to discuss uh, pulse width modulation, otherwise known as PWM. Okay, now <coughs> PWM, uh, it, it seems complicated, but it's not. And in fact, uh, one of the things that I try to uh, encourage you guys to do is pay attention to language. Don't don't look at pulse width modulation as a as a phrase and be intimidated by it. Look at the individual words. Or every every one of you has a pulse. You don't, you know. And your heart's electric, by the way. It uses Ohm's law <coughs> to um, control your uh, control your heart rate and um, you know, your heart uh, kind of looks like this. It's got four chambers, and it goes bloop, 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 bloop. And it's actually got bicuspid and tricuspid valves that are basically one-way check valves. And it's a variable displacement pump, just like anything you have on a hydraulic system. And the word tachys means speed, right? So if you have tachycardia, cardiac means he, uh, heart and tachys means speed. So tachycardia means your heart's racing. All right, well, in this particular case, you have a pulse. You know, I think it goes, that's pro that probably means you're like dying or something, but you get my point. And then width is width, right? So, you know, this is narrow and this is wide. All right, so width is width. The only word you may not be familiar with, but you really are, is the word modulate, which is the same word as module. And module or modulate literally means to change. So modular maintenance, modular home, engine control module. An engine control module is easy to change, which of course is where a lot of our problems arise because people want to change them all the time. Um, so Literally, the word pulse width modulation means to change the width of a pulse, okay? And you can have either PWM inputs or you can have PWM outputs, okay? And um, PWM inputs take an analog signal, um, and the word analog means analogy, actually, and an analog signal does this, and a digital signal does this, because digits means one and zero, and it converts an analog to a digital signal, and the computer is looking at time. All right, so for a PWM throttle position sensor, as you move the throttle position sensor, the PWM sensor is sending a time signal to the ECM. An output, on the other hand, doesn't really have any of this going on. It's the same idea, but it's actually average voltage, okay? And voltage is what controls amperage because, as you know from my previous conversations, volts and ohms make amps, all right? Well, if we're changing the resistance, that's a rheostat, and that will change amperage, or we can change voltage, which in this case is PWM. And either changing the rheostat resistance or changing the PWM voltage will change the amperage output. And when it comes to a solenoid that's doing a solenoid thing, Okay, solenoid has a magnetic field. So let me see if I can find a, um, oh, gone it. It's such a fressin', hold on. One eternity later. Sorry. So inside the solenoid is a coil of wire, just as a reminder, okay? That coil of wire produces a magnetic field, and the magnetic field looks like this. 
which is why you can use a compass. It's a very bad magnetic field, but it's still a magnetic field, and you get the idea. Okay, so uh, the strength of this magnetic field in a PWM actuator is what controls how much it pulls. So we need to be able to control the amount of proportional magnetism, which is why it's called a proportional solenoid. Okay, proportional simply means proportional actually just means a little is a little and a lot is a lot, right? So you pull the stick a little bit, you get a little bit of movement. You pull the stick a lot, you get a lot of movement, all right? That's um, fundamentally how that works, all right? So you've got basic idea here, all right? We can either send a pulse width signal into the computer, all right, um, to tell the computer something, because that's what inputs do, switches and sensors. Or we can use PWM to send a signal out to the uh, to an actuator in order to control a hydraulic system or a throttle or something to that effect. So that's the basic idea. Um, and I'm going to pause now and go look for my markers because I think my daughter's uh, daughter took them up to her room to do something for um, um, a project for school or something, and uh, I have to go get them back now. So give me give me just a minute here. Okay, so here's my Star Wars lunchbox. And lo and behold, look at all my markers. Oh, yeah, my daughter. She's just, okay. Let me get some markers out here. I can use them for different, oops, different colors, just like her. She's a pretty good artist. She, I mean, she does, she does all, all kind of neat stuff. She's pretty, pretty good at it, so I encourage that. I'm going to take pink out just because I can. I'll take out light blue. Um, okay. Okay. So what I'm going to do is move to the next portion of this, but I'm going to put this, uh, put the turn back up there because I want you guys to get used to understanding language. Language is so important, okay, critically important. Um, I mean, even the word solenoid comes from the word sun, S-O-L, okay? So language is, is, is really important. And I've already talked about that with rheostat. Rio means flow, potentio. Potentio means voltage. So I really hope you guys are focusing on language. And I'm actually working on uh, mechanics glossary. Uh, but um, it's, it's tough. I'm struggling. So what I'm going to do here um, is use something you're familiar with. So I'm going to start here. Then I'm going to say 2, 4, 6, 8, 10, 12, 14, 16, 18, 20, 22, 24. All right, well, 24 hours in a day. All right, so in this particular case, the cycle or circle is going to be a day. So the pulse width will be how long the width of the pulse is, and the cycle or frequency is going to be 24 hours. So the cycle or frequency is going to be 24 hours. And the pulse width is going to be literally the length in time that your uh, the signal is on. Okay, so... Um, Let's say that you work an eight-hour day, okay? Well, there's two, four, six, eight, all right? So let's say that you are on duty eight hours, okay? So uh, you're on duty eight hours, which would mean, of course, you know, not taking into consideration drive time and locker room time and all that other stuff we have to put up with that we're not paid for. Um, then you would be off duty 16 hours, okay? So that, that's the idea. You'll be off duty 16 hours. The pulse width in this case is going to be eight. So our PW, our pulse, our literal pulse width would be measured in hours and the width of the on pulse is eight hours. 
Well, there's also another element to this, and that is that this is one third on and two thirds off. So now our duty or our duty cycle, <laughs> I said duty, okay, is going to be 33.3%. This is what's referred to as percent duty, okay? So the duty cycle would be 33.3% or one-third on. That's all it means, okay? That's, that's literally all it means, all right? Um, so how does that translate into what we're doing and how we're doing this with, with machinery and stuff? Well, first of all, just a quick reminder, digital signals are on and off on off on off on off um, one is on zero is off and in some cases the signal would be considered high or low meaning on and off and you may never have actually paid attention to it but if you ever look at something electrical you may have an on off signal that looks like that and or an on-off button, I'm sorry. And what you may not realize is that that's a one and that's a zero. And one and zero means on and off, right? Okay, so how does this work? Well, let me see if I can put a pretty decent graph up here. Try to anyway. Okay, so we'll do four, eight. A few moments later. Okay, now, let's say that this is a 24 volt system. And let's say that the computer is sending an output pulse. We're gonna do outputs here. We'll do this as an output to illustrate what we're talking about. All right, well, let's say that in a 24 volt system, the computer is sending a 50% pulse, okay? My blue marker is dying. My daughter used it up. My daughter used up my blue marker. Stand in marker. Okay. So I've got a 50% duty cycle on 50% and off 50%. There you go. Okay which means we're dealing with approximately there, right? At well, what is 50% of 24? So at 50%, the voltage, average voltage is 12 volts. Remember I said we're dealing with average voltage, right? So now let's look at Ohm's law, 12, let's say we have a 24 ohm solenoid in a 24 volt system, which is not unusual. So 12 volts over 24 ohms means that at 50% duty cycle, the current flow through the solenoid is gonna be 0.5 amps. Okay, that's, I mean, that's just, that's Ohm's law. That's, that's why you need to know Ohm's law. Now, let's say, for the sake of argument, that we decide to go to a 75% duty cycle because we either want to go faster or dig harder or whatever. So now we're on. It's at 75%. Well, at 75%, the average voltage is 16 volts. So now let's do this, 16 or 18. 18 volts. Damn. Damn it, Jim. I'm a doctor, not a mathematician. Okay. Sorry. 18 volts. Screwed up. I just the number look. I I do this in class and the number look wrong. Okay, so let's do the math now. 18 volts divided by 24 ohms, which is Ohm's law, we get 0.75 amps. Well, what's changed? Well, what's changed is our amperage, which means the amp flow 
through the solenoid has increased or decreased and in doing so has changed the strength of the magnetic field. And in changing the strength of the magnetic field, we're changing the amount of hydraulic oil that's moving or whatever. And that then becomes a proportional solenoid because this is a proportional output. A little bit is a little bit and a lot of bit is a lot of bit. And that's really all there is to it, okay? So I'm gonna go get my pulse width modulated sender and my meter and I'm gonna hook it up to my battery and I'm gonna actually show you um, how this works um, so you can read it and I'll show you some actual numbers and then um, hopefully at that point you'll have a much better understanding of what this is and won't be afraid of it because we're right back to day one in, in electrical class with Ohm's Law, right? We're right back there so don't ever think you don't need it. And um, even though I did the math here, it's really more important to understand that volts and ohms make amps, right? So more volts is more amps. More volts is more amps. And that's how the, that's how the, um, the mechanic uses Ohm's law to understand that relationship, okay? Okay, um, now what I've got here, this is Caterpillar, um, and it's fairly standard. Cat pretty much makes every single PWM sensor um, the same. This would be in a throttle or it would be in a hand stick controller. Um, and there's uh, fundamentally electronic circuitry inside here that has an oscillator <coughs> which oscillates the signal. In this case it oscillates it. I'm not actually sure to be honest with you. Um, my other one was 5000 hertz. I don't know what the frequency is on this one but we'll know in a minute. Um, so the, e every particular system has a, a, a cycle all right, so if you're reading a waveform for injectors or if you're reading an output for a, com for a controller of some kind or whatever, okay, fundamentally the system has to have a cycle and then in order for it to work, uh, the on and off has to be a percentage of that cycle. So it's a percent on, if you remember, percent on and percent off. All right, well, I, I wanted to point out that um, it does affect voltage and this is your average voltage, right? So um, in this particular case, we're down at about four tenths of a volt at low, and then at, uh, we're about five at high. Now that's why I have this one because it's it's broken. Um, it should be 0.5 and 4.5, but it's not. All right, so that's just typical. But the the bottom line is, in a sensor, the voltage doesn't matter. This this number here is irrelevant. Okay, because what we're really doing is time. So if if this is going to work the way I hope it will, if I go to frequency. Notice I get 5.618 kilohertz. So this one is also at roughly 5,000 hertz, okay? It's important to understand that as I adjust this, the frequency is gonna change slightly just because it does, because that's this the aberration. But notice it only changes three or four hertz out of roughly 4,600, okay? So that's, that's the frequency, all right? Now, if if we did the math on it, 4,620 cycles per second, um, then we do um, 4,620, make sure you can read that, 4,620, and then invert that, and we get, I was right, ha, I was right, 0 .0002, so the actual cycle is 0 0.00021645. So that's two ten thousandths of a second for the cycle, all right? So this cycle here was 24 hours, but the cycle in here is two ten thousandths of a second. So that means any of these on-off signals are going to be a percentage of 0 0.0002, which means if we're at 50%, this system is only on for 0 0.0001 seconds. So anytime you're dealing with injectors or anything where you deal with pulse width modulation or PWM or duty cycle, okay, the first thing is that the cycle is the length of time in seconds that 
the system is cycling. It goes from, basically goes in a circle. It goes from here to here to here. To, right? And it's, the percentage duty cycle is the amount of that circle or cycle that the signal is on, all right? So now, oh, here we go, screwdriver. All right, it's off. So now if I hit frequency again, that puts me into percent. And if you notice, it says percent right there, okay? So in the fully off or fully reduced position, we're at 6.5%. Now I think it's gonna go to OL. Well, I don't know, let's see. Some of these, nope, there we go. So notice as I increase it, I'm not increasing voltage, I'm increasing percent on time. And this goes up to about 95% and then comes back down. All right. Now, if I did this right, I've never done the math on this. Um, 0 0.382 volts at low. Uh, and 4. 0.83, so let me do this here, 4.83 minus 0.382 equals 4.44, let's divide that in half, and then add that back to 0.382, and If I'm lucky, I'm not always lucky, but if I go to 50% and I get 0 0.28, 0 0.26, or skip 2.606, let me see how close I can get, 2 point, close. If I did this right, this should be at 50%. Yep, about, it's cycling. Yeah, see, that's why I had it's broken. It was 50% a second ago, there we go, 50%. Yeah, this one's broken. At any rate, 49.9% average voltage. Um, so, the, oh, holy crap, I got 50 straight up. All right, so that's how this works. All right, so terminology is important. Understanding the language is important. Understanding physically, mechanically what's happening is important. Um, and the reason we do this is because computers like turning things on and off, but they do not like analog signals. All right, so an analog signal would look like Oh, it's a different color. An analog signal would look like this. Okay, an analog signal would look like this, and computers don't like that. That's bad. Computers hate that. That's very difficult. That's a very difficult thing to make computers do, at least, you know, relatively. So if, if we can avoid that and do this instead, the system's going to work a lot better. So if you have any questions, of course, you can email me. Let me know. Um, that's essentially all there is to it. Uh, Keep studying, uh, you're, you're, you're smart enough to do this, and um, uh, I hope this helps. Um, so you guys be safe and um, stay confident.